Hello and welcome back to my garage today. I am Jeremy and we are wiring up a push button starter. Right here we have the push button and you can see it fires up the starter. We also have three accessory switches which you will see light up the light bulbs. Now this is wired the same way that the seller of this product recommends you wire it. So I'm going to show you this method and then I'm going to switch it up a little bit and I'll show you a different method of wiring it. Let's go back in time for just a minute though and I'll show you what I got in the mail when I purchased this item. Now here is the switch. As you can see you have your main on off switch and then you have your engine start switch and then a few accessory switches as well. Now for me to properly demonstrate how to wire up one of these it's much easier if I take this apart and then attach it to my normal plastic boards. So I'm going to go ahead and take these switches out and then we'll get it attached to the board and it'll all start making sense. Now if you've seen any of my other videos you know that there are a lot of different ways to wire a 12 volt system. So this is just one method. It might be perfect for you or it might not be. It really depends what you're doing. This specific circuit is exactly how it is described in the instructions that come with this product. Up here you have your starter for your engine. You have your main power coming off your battery and going to your starter. And then this is the ground wire that goes to the starter, which you're not actually going to have because your starter is going to be grounded right to the engine block itself. Now when you buy this specific circuit online, one other thing that you're going to need is some sort of fused wire or you'll need to wire this switch right into your existing fuse box if you have one of those. For this demonstration, I'm just using a universal fused wire. Now much like the main power that goes to your starter, we have power coming in here to a fuse and it goes here to the main power switch. Now this switch, you can see right on it, it says it's a 20 amp switch at 12 volts. So that's the amount of amperage that this switch can handle. You can have 20 amps going through this. If you had 21 amps going through it, you'd probably burn out the switch and have other electrical issues which you don't want to get involved with. Now the power for the actual push button start switch comes from this master switch. So we can flick this on and now there's power coming out this side and going over to the start switch but it's not doing anything until you push the button. Now as soon as you push the engine start button, you take the power from this side and you send it out this side over to your starter solenoid and it tells your starter to turn on. Now you may have noticed there's actually two wires connected to this switch. The other wire comes off here and goes to your first accessory switch. And then that power is actually daisy chained to the other accessory switches which means each switch has power on this side of the switch. So you can see it comes from here and then it goes to here and then it goes to here. And then if you switch the switch on, it takes the power from this side and it sends it out this side, which then in this case, it lights up a light bulb. The other side of the light bulb is a ground, which this is just a, a ground block, a distribution block. And you can see there's a ground, a little ground wire coming up here that goes to this ground distribution block and it makes the whole thing a ground. So this would be like your chassis of your car or your motorcycle or whatever you happen to be adding this circuit to. And then of course if we flip the other switches we have more light bulbs. Now there's a catch to all this. This all works fine as long as your accessories that you're powering off these switches are very low amperage draws. Because remember this can only handle 20 amps total. So if you had something off of this switch that was 10 amps and this one that was 10 amps and this one that was 10 amps and you turned them all on at once now you're drawing 30 amps through this side of the circuit and your switch can only handle 20 so again you're going to burn out your circuit now one way to protect the whole circuit from you know problems or fire is having the right size fuse in here so you definitely never want to put anything bigger than a 20 amp fuse in this fuse holder you want this fuse to blow as soon as there's anything more than 20 amps being drawn through these wires. So now what do you do if you want to have some bigger items on these switches like a fuel pump or maybe a window motor and maybe a second window motor. Now each one of these window motors is 13 amps and this draws I think about 18 amps. So if you add all these up you're now at 44 amps and that is way more than this circuit can handle. And you can't just put in a bigger fuse because you're going to burn out your switch. And if you put in a bigger switch, you have to upgrade your wiring. It becomes a whole thing that you don't want to deal with. 
But there's a way around this. And the answer to that problem is relays. If you use relays and have the switches turn on and off the relays, now you can have this circuit control these items in a safe way. Let me just show you, and then it'll make more sense. Instead of having light bulbs here, I'm gonna replace it with a fuel pump to draw a little more electricity through this circuit, and I'm gonna put a relay in place to do it in a safe manner. I now have the fuel pump attached to the board and I have a relay powering the fuel pump. Now the relay is controlled with a switch. So the switch turns on the relay, the relay turns on the fuel pump. Let me show you how it works. So we have the master switch still, which you can see is now on because the light turns on. And we have the engine start switch, which is exactly the same as it was before. This switch is exactly the same as well. It turns on our little 194 light bulb. Then we have this second switch which now controls the relay. Now if I turn this switch on, it's gonna tell the relay to turn on, and the relay is going to tell the fuel pump to turn on. Which you can see right there. Now the third switch I just got rid of to make room for the relay and the fuel pump. Another thing that you might have noticed is the fuse size here is much smaller now. We went from a 20 amp fuse to a five amp fuse, and then right here, we added a brand new 20 amp fuse which you can follow up through this blue wire and it goes up to pin 30 on our relay. Now, the great thing about relays is that they do all the work for the switch. So the switch is no longer passing all that electricity to the fuel pump, but the relay is, and the relay is able to handle a lot more amperage than a regular switch can. Now on the bottom of a relay, you'll see four pins, if it's a four pin relay. There's also five pin relays and six pin relays. There's a bunch of different type of relays, but today we're using a four pin relay. On the bottom, you'll see that each pin is numbered. So we have pin 30 on the bottom, pin 87 on the top, pin 86 on the left, and pin 85 on the right. Now each of those numbers actually matches up with one of the colored wires here. So pin 30 is the blue wire, pin 87 is the yellow wire, pin 86 is the white wire, and pin 85 is the black wire. So when we want to turn the fuel pump on, the switch sends a signal to the relay through this white wire, saying, hey relay, connect the blue wire to the yellow wire, or pin 30 to 87, and then the relay's like, hey, that's cool, let me turn on the fuel pump, and it connects those two wires together inside, and the fuel pump turns on, like this. I have actually a couple other videos showing how to wire fuel pumps with inertia switches, and how to decide the right wire size, and fuse size, and all that stuff. So go ahead and check in my description below, and there'll be links there for those. We've now just added a universal ignition switch to the board, and you can see it works like any other ignition switch. You got a key that goes in and it turns to the accessory position, and of course the start position, and the run position. Now when we do have it in this run position, we have the power coming in through the fuse, and instead of going to this switch, we have it going to the key. So it comes into the ignition switch here, and then it goes out the ignition switch over to our master switch here. So you can see we have power here now, but if we turn it off, we lose the power to this switch, therefore everything after it is dead. But if it's turned on, we now have power going to this switch, which then sends power to our push button starter, and this, and our fuel pump. But we could turn them all off with the ignition switch if we wanted, or we could use this master switch as well. Now this does mean that using this will not start the car because we have the push button start switch here. This is no longer part of the actual starting system of the car other than the fact that it is giving power to this master switch here. 
If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to like this one that I put right up here. It talks more about how great relays are and the different ways that you can use them. And I would love it if you would subscribe, like, comment below, and share this with a friend if you think that they will find it useful. Thank you so much, and I will see you on the next one.